hi and welcome back to my channel <laughs> intro because i don't have nothing on but i'm gonna be my makeup today and it's literally currently 11 o'clock at night but it's fine because who's gonna stop me you know what i'm saying so today i'm just gonna be doing my makeup and showing you guys what i'm gonna be doing and i'm also going to just be talking about some college stuff preparing for college don't look at my edges right now i have to redo them because I went to work today and I already have my eyebrows done because I had my eyebrows done today and that's that. I'm sitting on my bed because honestly, I don't know. It's just kind of the first place I thought to film. You know, I want to work on my film setup and everything since I'm about to move. This is what we're working with right now. But yeah, today I want to talk about preparing for college because I know for me it was hard, especially when you're a first generation college student it's like you don't know how anything works and there's no one to help you so you basically gotta figure all this stuff out i'm here to help you so before we start i'm going to put on some lip gloss because imagine completely missing your lip trying to be cute with this camera <laughs> yeah i put on lip gloss because i don't want my lips to look dry or anything because don't you hear me watching a video and the girls or boys lips just be looking so dry i'm just like you just gonna go out in public like that like where's the moisture yeah, i know this video is a little ghetto but just disregard the setup and everything i just really feel like doing makeup and why not record it because i like to talk to y'all oh and sorry if you can hear the fan it's kind of loud but it's not really much i can do right now because it's all the way over there and who feels like getting up not me but i'm gonna use the she glam concealer to for my lips but basically today i just wanted to talk about like the process of preparing for college you know at any age but especially if you are in 11th grade and you're about to be a senior or you're already a senior and you just need a little help because i know for me it was really hard like a lot of people i knew um and a lot of friends i had they had parents that went to college and like a lot of family that went and they just knew how everything worked and that wasn't the case for me i just didn't know how anything worked i asked for a lot of help but there was really no one to help me so even though there's plenty of opportunity that chose not to help me. So I really had to just figure it out myself. I tried to ask a few people and some people did help, but to be honest, I just watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos when it came to things like my FAFSA and everything. And you just, you learn as you go. So I'm just going to be telling you guys how I figured out how I got, how to apply for college and get everything prepared for it. Because right now it is July 29th. And I am currently about to move into my dorm on August 20th, which is actually really close, like it's really around the corner. So I just wanted to put this video out there to help anyone who is preparing for college and is back to school season anyway. So, so basically when you first are, you know, going into your senior year of college, you're going to be everything, bruh. Every teacher, every adult in your life is going to be like, so where are you going? Oh my god, what are you doing for college and blah blah blah, whatever. Right? And you're gonna honestly feel really overwhelmed, especially if you don't know, because I didn't know. I thought I was going to so many different schools, doing so many different things, but later on I ended up doing what I think is right and what I think I'll be successful in. I hope I will. It's what I love, it's my passion. So basically what I'm going to school for, just a little background. I'm going to Kent State University it's in Ohio and it is a public university. I've actually never got to visit because there was a virus going around, you know what I'm saying? And I never got to visit, but I did do like virtual tours and stuff and I chose to go to Kent. My major is fashion merchandising and originally my major was finance. <laughs> I know that's a big change, but I switched it to fashion merchandising because so yeah, like I was saying, I originally was going to school for finance, but I changed it because I just, you know, I was like the creative artsy girl in my class and there were people who were like, I don't know how the next generation of artists is gonna be. Like everyone's just so stuck on doing business, business, business. And fashion merchandising is still business degree. So I do really like business. That's why I originally was gonna do finance. But I thought about, you know, when you go to college, think about how you can change the world. Not literally, like I know that sounds like girl, 
but not literally but there is things that you can do when you go to school to make a difference and i plan to go to school with fashion merchandising so when i get out and i have my degree i can work in fashion and hopefully influence brands to be more sustainable and um environmentally friendly so that when the earth is dying we can die with a little bit more years on us you know what i'm saying because if you know what climate change is then you know that it's not looking good for us at all and the second biggest polluter is the clothing and fashion industry if you didn't know that now you know i know it's really disappointing it's really crazy but if there's anything i would want to change in the world it's definitely the environment so if you can see this little line right here it's literally a lot of eyelash glue because i have some eyelashes on but i took it off so yeah but whatever anyway so originally i was actually going to go to school for finance but now i'm going for fashion merchandising i made those decisions in 12th grade but when i was in 10th grade and i originally planned to go to college i was going to major in environmental science as you can see i'm very like for the environment and everything but so i'm still finding a way to incorporate environmental science into my career path because my original passion is fashion it's always been like literally since i was like seven and i was watching project runway every tuesday thursday whatever day it was i was like oh yes i'm gonna be a fashion designer now it's different i don't even want to be a fashion designer i just want to work in the industry you know behind the scenes more of the business part but you get what i'm saying so yeah that's a little background on my college decisions and stuff. I applied to a couple of schools. I only applied to three. There was, I was going to apply to more. Don't get me wrong. It's good to apply to more schools and all that jazz, but I didn't because originally I didn't want to go anywhere far. I didn't want to go out of state. Right now I live in Maryland and Kent is in Ohio. And originally I applied to Bowie State, Robert Morris, um, and Kent. I was gonna apply to a and and some other schools, but I just decided that those schools were more of a peer pressure thing. Like, literally, everybody was telling me, oh, apply to here, apply to here. I was like, okay. But I never applied because I never really wanted to go to those schools, so. Tip, do not apply anywhere just because somebody's telling you to really do your research and find out what you wanna do, find out the top schools for it, and it doesn't have to be a top school, it can be the school that you can afford because I definitely chose the school I could afford. Kent is the only affordable fashion school that I know of and it's one of the best, so that is why it was my choice. Not the only reason, but that was a big reason. Yeah, basically, um, when you are deciding on what school you want to go to, you want to make sure you do your research. I know it's really hard when you don't really know anything about college and you don't know what to do for real, but all you have to do is go on Google and say, top schools for it, da 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 da, whatever field you want to be in. And the way I did that was, sorry, the way I found my school was searching for schools in a range that wasn't too far and that also had what I wanted for a reasonable price. Knowing that I was going to school for finance, it was a lot of options. That changed my decision. And I still am going to the same school, but I changed my degree to fashion merch. Yeah, so basically you just want to research schools. I recommend going for the school that you can afford. Like, if you can afford your dream school, by all means do it. Or if you're willing to go into debt for the rest of your life, then by all means do it. But personally, I'm not doing that. I am not going to debt for the rest of my life. Sorry, it's just not happening. But basically you just wanna, price is a factor. I know a lot of people don't really take price into consideration and then they come out as adults and they have all this debt and they kind of regret it and they're like, I wish I would've did this, 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 this. Now I haven't got to school yet, so I'm going to have to do some more advice videos once I get there. But I do know that a lot of adults um, kind of not regret where they went, but kind of, you know, wish they was a little more reasonable and went to a school that was more affordable for them. Now, with that being said, some things are worth going to death for. Like, it's worth it if you really love that school and you really can't go anywhere else. Like, to me, it wasn't that deep because I never really took college serious until around 11th grade but yeah when i did i figured out what school i went to go to and it was fine i was kind of on the back burner for kent a little bit i was like i don't know if i want to go there for real but my mom really wanted me to go there which had nothing to do with my decision to be honest but i am glad that you know she's happy with where i'm going um because she wanted me to go out of state and really explore and live my life you know because i was gonna stay in state and 
that was just BS for real. So yeah, main point is, I feel like I'm just getting really off topic, but the main point is do your research for where you're gonna go to school. The second point is to do not BS your SAT. Listen, I got lucky and you know, I'm going to school with a reasonable price, you know, the school gave me some money. Did I do good on my SAT? No, I did not. You know why I didn't? Because I didn't study. I studied a little bit like in class, but not really. Like I didn't have those SAT books. I didn't do all that. Cause I always thought it doesn't matter. I have really good grades. So it'll be fine. My GPA is high. Well, GPA is high. So I think that it wasn't that bad for me. I think that it wasn't that bad for me when I wanted to, you know, choose a school or whatever, because I had a high GPA. So I did have options. Schools do look at your GPA as well as your SAT, but mostly your SAT. Like if you have a really good SAT and not so good GPA, then you have a really good chance of getting into where you want to go or you know doing what you want doing what you want to do and vice versa but not as much you know those really look at sat they love the sat they think you should just get the highest score known to man on it and i don't blame them but that just wasn't realistic for me i'm terrible at tests they give me anxiety and i just that wasn't for me if you really cannot afford school like me i really can't afford school either but i was just dumb if you really like stressed or worried about the price point then i say just doing well in your sat because they will give you money like period you can apply to so many schools your sat really matters like if you apply to a rinky dink school not that these schools are rinky dink but there are some schools that are like up here and some that are down here and if you have a sat like i know that there was one local school around here i ain't gonna say it because i don't know if i can but it literally was giving everybody at my school like full rides <laughs> for real and their sats was like 11 1100 to be honest and that's not bad like that's pretty oc i didn't go to that school but i know people who do and i know like these smaller schools if you're into a smaller school and even if you're into a bigger school like they will give you a lot of money for your sat and also your extracurriculars if you're not involved in school yet girl get involved because first of all i was involved in so many things i think that might also had you know an effect on what the school gave me but i was involved in so many things like i was in i did cheer all four years i was captain my last year i did a program called game plan i did a whole bunch of business programs like jumpstart with deloitte and just a whole bunch of like pg programs <laughs> and stuff like that and finance programs and i was in clubs and all this stuff like it's really important to get involved because schools look at it and it helps you get more resources and opportunities because i know i got a lot of opportunities from things like cheer like cheer gave me a lot of opportunities being a cheerleader you have like connects and people want to help you because they know that you are an athlete and you have to struggle just like any other athlete with school like academics and your sport and it's hard so people do reach out and they want to help you which was like the main thing at game plan we love you game plan i'm gonna miss you so much but um yeah so i definitely recommend getting sport getting involved even if it's not sports i know sports aren't for everybody it really barely was for me but i really love cheer it was like a big passion of mine. so yes i recommend getting involved in school and just monitoring what you do senior year you don't have to be oc stressed like it's not a stress for 11th grade to me at least because 11th grade was a trip but but senior year you do want to you know have your things aligned so that you can be ready for going back to school and be ready for preparing for colleges and everything like that now when it comes to your actual application you want to really pay attention because schools they're not as like oc as i think they have been in the past and when i'm talking about this i'm really talking about your admissions essay i know some schools might not require an essay actually i don't know but i don't think every school requires an essay but this um kent definitely did and i think every school i applied to did except for one which was Bowie state but yeah so you just want to make sure when you write in your essay you get people adults in your life to read over your essay bro it was so hard like i'm telling you i had to get like three four people to read over my essay because i didn't know if it was good enough i didn't know anything about college i didn't know like what they were looking for or anything and they helped me like i had to make a lot of fixes not a lot like in a bad way but there are some things that you might think you have the best essay in the world but i still recommend that you get it checked out by an adult because there are some things you don't even think of that you have in there so yeah there's that um submit your essay i do think you should have more than one just in case because you know some schools prompt is different than others really pay attention to your essays and work on them take them serious because schools really look at them like oc not even necessarily about your writing i don't think they look 
but more so what you're writing about how you're you know writing what is the main goal of what you're saying like how can you convince them that you are a good fit for their school and that they should accept you that's what you should be thinking about when you're writing your essay for real now i don't know why when i was younger and people would talk about college they'd be like oh this essay is so crazy to be honest the essay is pretty short like it's literally not that long at all so i don't think it is that crazy as people haven't been making it seem but um these eyelashes look terrible i don't know why i just slapped them on like that but we don't use them though because it's late and i ain't keeping them on for long <laughs> but schools just look at the context of your essay not necessarily the length some schools have a length limit like most schools want i think like 500 words which is really not a lot at all to be honest like people really jazz it 500 words is such a little bit i'm just saying in my experience and you really have to get your point across in that little bit of 500 words which was tricky in my case like i had to rewrite mine a couple of times because i didn't get to the point i didn't say anything important fast enough or at all so you just want to keep going with your essays all the time and you know making sure that you're doing your research on the school seeing what they like they don't like talk to people who if you know older people who are in college like i did you can talk to them ask them for help like i have one friend and she's in the same she was in the same situation i was in and she figured it out too you know there was not really anyone there to help her like what it is but there wasn't anyone to help us really figure out how college works so you really have to do the research yourself especially when it comes to the like paperwork type stuff now applying to the school to be honest isn't that hard it's everything that comes after like all the documents you have to send and you want to make sure you have all your documents redo your fafsa bro i mean not gonna lie i have to redo my fafsa about four times they just kept declining it like college was really stressful for me i was really like getting down on myself because they kept rejecting my fafsa but it was for you know certain reasons when it came to like paperwork and stuff but the main thing is don't get discouraged if like you make a mistake or they tell you that this didn't go through or blah 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 even if you don't get accepted into every school that you apply to it's not that big a deal i have not applied to any like ivy leagues or any schools that are like big like that so i don't know what it's like if you don't get accepted and it's like really down on you and you just take it so hard simply because i got into all of my schools that i applied to not trying to or anything like that it's just that the schools that i applied to i don't think were that hard to get into so yeah kind of forgot what i was saying but more of the story don't get it down if you like your paperwork is not all together at first like if people are reaching out and telling you like oh you can just do it again and it's okay like giving you chances and stuff to fix it so that they can help you and you can get to where you want to go take it and you know find help where you can i know it's really hard but you really have to reach out to people especially adults because not only are they really busy but they also like they're most likely not going to reach out to you directly unless they're assigned to it like you know what i mean like some teachers or adults in the building are like college counselors or whatever but if they're not bad and you know that they can help you reach out to them a lot of schools teachers will help you i don't know everybody's school but i think that the teachers will help you especially if they know that you've never done it before personally a teacher that helped me was from my middle school actually because teachers in high school were bs to be honest i just wasn't really like a teacher's pet or anything so they didn't really mess with me like that but i know some people did and their teachers did help them like you know so yeah basically what i'm trying to say is just reach out for anything specific you need help with take everything specifically it's not all one thing and done it's process after process you have to do this you have to do this you know things have deadlines like you want to keep up with your deadlines and your schoolwork because at the end of the day you're still a student you do want to graduate you want to pass you want to get out of high school i know i did <laughs> so yeah i feel like this video is gonna be really long i'm sorry i just really want you guys to understand like what i'm trying to say and how i'm trying to help you because i think it's really important to get help with college when it comes to your fafsa make sure you have all your documentation and make sure it's correct because if it's not they will reach out and be like bro this ain't right so do it again and just do it to be honest i know it's really hard and sometimes you don't have your parents that you can reach out to to help you because they don't know either they just never have done it and that's happened in my situation so i had to reach out to you know like different adults in my life and um like friends parents and mostly just the internet 
um especially when you're doing research on loans and stuff i do recommend going to there's one video i watch i'm gonna try to find it and link it below and there's one video and explained every loan so simple because there's like six different types of loans or something bro did i know that no when i was applying and stuff i thought it was one loan you just got it or you didn't bro there's so many different types of loans when you're first gen, you don't know anything about anything. Like, you don't know how people pay for it. You don't know anything. I always thought, like, people had money saved up and they just paid for cars like that. Which, yes, I know it's ridiculous. But that's what I thought, you know, when I was younger. And when I was not experienced with college at all, I just didn't know anything. More of the story is there are different ways to pay for college. Now, if you do have funds saved up for college, yes, bro, I'm so happy for you. Please use them for college only and make sure like they're giving you exactly what you're paying for. Now, I know that loans can be really tricky, but people are gonna tell you that private loans are the worst ones and they are because they are private. So they can basically kind of do whatever they want. Sounds bad, but sometimes you have to get a private loan. Like if you can't really like afford it or if the federal loans aren't enough because FAFSA to be honest didn't have do anything for me. So I had to look into private loans and I didn't end up needing one yet. But if you do like it's okay that you have to have one. It's not that big a deal. As long as you keep up with it, like just make sure that you, that looks terrible. <laughs> just make sure that you keep up with it and you know what you're getting into. Do your research on every loan. Like a big one is Sally Mae. I've heard really good things and I've heard really bad things about Sally Mae. So just make sure you do your research and really think about which loan option is best for you. If you don't need a loan and you are lucky enough to be able to pay out of pocket or just use your savings or a federal loan, which is the best type, the easiest type, then just make sure you keep up with it. Anything that has to do with money, you want to make sure that you're keeping up with especially for college because you're going to be so distracted um guessing you're going to be so distracted and not thinking about how you need to stay on top of your money habits and you know your loan payments and everything because some options you can pay during school and some you can pay after you graduate it really depends on what you think you can handle i plan to pay most of my college during school i don't know if i'm gonna be able to afford all of it during school but well, there's so many things especially you do not have to work a nine to five i don't care what anyone tells you because there's just i refuse to think that you have to work a nine to five to get anything done there's just no way there's that many options out there on the internet especially when it comes to e-commerce and stuff and you have to work nine to five because nine to fives are really tiring and i just think that when you're a college student you take all these college classes why would you want to be so tired from your nine to five you have class on the next day or you have class to stress you out you don't need that job to stress you out i'm telling you stress okay so i feel like i'm getting a little bit off track so moral of the story is when you are applying to schools make sure you do your research on your loan options your school options and what will be of what'll be most affordable and you know even if you have the time and you can calculate like what options would be best for you and how much you'll be paying during or after you're in school you can really calculate it if you can like that could really help you if you already know ahead of time so you can start working towards that goal of paying it off and everything like that now for me personally i had to do a lot of things myself and honestly you will have to either way <laughs> So just make sure you're really looking at the right sources and you're really taking into consideration everything that you find, write things down, take notes, see your best options, weigh them out with your, weigh out all your options and make sure that you're choosing the best one. And even if it's not the best one, it's okay. Like we're young and they expect us to have our lives together. So even if you don't, don't feel janky about it because I completely think that we're young and we don't know everything. We, we're not robots. We can't just pick up information like that, you know? I'm putting on a lot of flesh, but it's okay. Mm, yeah. So I just think that if you can do all the research you can so that when it comes time to finance college, you know what you're getting into. I didn't know. Um, when you're applying, make sure you apply by the deadline. A lot of schools have an early deadline where you can become priority basically when you apply. I definitely recommend that. I personally didn't do any because I just was too stressed out. I just had so many things going on. I didn't know how anything worked for real, but be better than me and apply early. Ended up that the school I chose to go to, I did apply in a good enough time. You know, they still had money to give out. They still had options, opportunities. So that was just my experience, but yeah, you just want to make sure that you're on top of your deadlines. List out your top five or so schools and make sure those are the ones you focus on and you apply to. A lot of people 
focus on like so many different schools and that's why they end up having a hard time because you can't apply to so many schools or focus on so many things at once and expect them all to be great that's just not realistic like you want to put your best foot forward in these applications all the time so narrow it down and focus is what i'm basically trying to say uh i think i'm about to finish with my face you guys see I will need some longest eyelashes. Shop Linux Co. I don't know if I'm gonna use my hair. Honestly, I think I'm just gonna like put some in the back. <laughs> but yeah, basically, my hair is in these braids with these beads. You know, I love me a braided bead look. But um, we're nearing the end of this video. I'm about to just finish it off with some lip gloss and my final tips that I have for you guys. Basically, all I have to say is do your research. That's the main thing. That's number one. You're just do your research on every school you're applying to. And every, just, you know, whatever you find is your career path. Even if you don't have one specifically, you want to just look for schools that you can afford or that you think has a good environment for you. Not just the popular ones. Not just the Ivy League expensive ones. Like, go for what's best for you. Don't feed into the hype of any of these schools. Like, I know a and is really, really hyped. At least around me and where I live. So don't feel the pressure if you don't really want to go there or if you have different options, you know? Oh, I forgot I need to do my little edge. That's my edge booster! But my little sister keeps stealing my edge booster and I'm like, did you buy that? Because that joint's ten dollars and dang edges. Oh no moment tell. <laughs> I found it. So basically, um, I'm just gonna do one little edge because I'm not keeping this on for long. So it's not that deep. Okay, maybe two or three. But whatever. Just make sure you really do your research. And if you're first gen, do not be afraid to reach out to anyone because they can help you OC. Like, even if it's just a freshman from the year before you, they can help you. They went through the process. Um, don't feel discouraged if you don't, if you get really confused or lost. Just know that you have goals in life and college is in your plans. So you can make it happen. I know it's really hard, especially with the setbacks. Like for me, it was my FAFSA that was a major setback for me and I almost didn't go to school because of it, so. Basically, I just recommend that you guys really do your research and know what you're getting into when it comes to college. I know college isn't for everyone, but if it is for you and you are interested in the idea, then go. I feel like it's really worth it. It's amazing to have the opportunity to go. So if you do, I recommend you take it, to be honest. I'm finished my makeup and I'm finished chatting your ears off, so. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two from this video. I hope I helped you. If you want any more college tips, you can just let me know in the comments, on my social media. You know, DM me. I answer my DMs because I know sometimes randomly people just DM me and they just ask me a question like, what kind of hair did you use to do those braids? I say, girl, here, just, you know, like, it's not that hard. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again next time. Oh, I just realized I never showed you guys final look. Just do a good brown smoky eye.